So remember, in biology, whenever the term primitive comes, it means first formed. There is a lining inside the kennel. So those lining are made up of cells called as coenocytes or collar cells. The stinging capsules, which are also called as nematocysts. So these are present on the tentacle. So Medusa, they are free living. The best example is this jellyfish. Hello everyone, a warm welcome to another session on chapter 4 that is Animal Kingdom. I am Dr. Divya, Biology Faculty, Vidyashram Pre-University College, Mysore, Temple of Excellence. So in the previous session under the Kingdom Animalia, we had studied some of the basic characteristics that are commonly used to classify an organism under the Kingdom Animalia. So I, I had told you that when we consider the animal kingdom, there is a vast variety of organisms, right? So when you see each of the things, right from the minute insects, uh, we can take the example of an ant, the ladybug, to the large animals, that is the whale. Up till that, you have a wide array of organisms, differences in the uh, organisms that comes under the animal kingdom. So how are they classified? So we had uh, studied that they are classified based on their uh, body characters, that is the presence of coelom, the absence of coelom, or maybe based on their organ system, that is the digestive system and the circulatory system. And also we had studied that based on uh, the embryonic layers that is present, they are classified as diploblastic or triploblastic. And we also studied based on the type of X uh, in the digestive system again there was complete digestive system or incomplete digestive system so be and also coelom so based on all these things animals are categorized under different phylum so in today's class now we have an idea about how they are categorized right so we in today's class we shall study about each phylum in detail so we shall study with start with the two phylum today and then move on to the other phylums in the next coming session so we shall start with the classification of animals wherein based on characters they have grouped few of the animals under the kingdom animalia under phylum porifera so porifera the word itself says poor means porifera, porifera pores. So pores are present in them. So in what usually you find pores, do you uh, just uh, imagine, just think in your mind or imagine in your mind a different kind of animals. So do you find pores anywhere in the animal? Do the body of the animal have holes? No, right? Other than the openings. So the mouth, the anus and all that, ear and all that, you can't call them as pores. It is the opening. But other than that, pores means they are my, minute holes that are present. So in other animals, you don't find it. So in which do you find the pores? It is the sponges. So sponges are aquatic. They can be fresh water as well as they can be marine water. So whatever the different kinds of sponges are placed under the phylum porifera under the kingdom animalia. So we shall discuss about the sponges that is the phylum porifera. So these five sponges they are marine as I told you. They are also found in Few, very few are found in the fresh water and majority of the uh, sponges, they are found in the marine water that is in the seas and the oceans, deep inside the seas and the oceans. And they are usually multicellular animals. So sponges are multicellular and remember in previous session I had given you an example, right, about sponges. What did I tell you about that body symmetry? They do not have a symmetry. They are asymmetrical. Why they are asymmetrical? Because it cannot be cut into two halves, right? That is mirror image. It cannot be a mirror image. So uh, apart from that, and uh, also organization of the cells is also one of the characteristics of um, uh, that is one of the features that can be used to classify an organism. So when it, when I talk about the organization of the cells, it is nothing but sponges are multicellular. So they just have a cellular level level of organization. They don't have a organ tissue level of organization nor a uh, organ level of organization, neither a organ system level of organization. In sponges, only a multicellular level of organization is there, wherein they just have more than one number of cells. So they have a multicellular organization and sponges 
that come under the phylum Porifera or the phylum Porifera are the primitive multicellular animals. So what do you mean by primitive here? So remember in biology whenever the term primitive comes it means first formed. So you know that each one of us, all the living organisms that are present in the earth today, they have evolved from something. So something was a base for which we are today, right? So just like that, in the case of animals, kingdom animalia, the, for the development of other multicellular organisms, the sponge was a base. Means when the earth formed, sponges were the first formed multicellular organisms. And from those multicellular animals, all the other multicellular animals came into existence. That is why they are called as primitive. So primitive means they are first formed. So they are the first animals to, multicellular animals to come to earth. Then after, once the sponges came, other multicellular animals got evolved from the sponges. It is said like that according to the research done by various biologists and scientists. And also sponges, they have a cellular level of organization. Again here, because cellular level of organization, because I told you obviously they are multicellular animals. So they have a cellular level of organization and the water transport is usually through a kennel system. So why kennel system? Because in our body, the water transport, how it takes place, we drink water, then we have a proper uh, food pipe through which it is carried and it is uh, transported to different parts of the body as required, right? We have a proper functioning there, that is the organ and the organ system level. But in the case of sponges, since they don't have organs or organ system as whole, they just have a kennel system through which the water, just imagine a water pipe. So it's just like a kennel system. So uh, in through that the water actually passes into the sponges. So they have the water transport of water is through kennel system and the pathway of water transport. So what happened here again when the water is transported through that pathway through that kennel through which the water is transported inside the sponges no to that kennel only food is also gathered. So whatever because uh, say for example we animals. Uh, we have a separate respiratory system for respiration. We have a digestive system for digestion. Uh, and when it comes to digestive system, the esophagus or the food pipe, then our uh, stomach, the intestine, all that comes under the digestive system. But in uh, sponges, they don't have an organ system, right? It is just a cellular system. So here what happens? Everything, respiration, the transport of water, the passage of food and uh, the exchange that is removal of waste, all that takes place through one particular kennel. So just one kennel is there. So you can see here it is just one tube like this. So whatever has to happen, no, it will happen inside this tube only. Inside the tube nothing is there, no organs, nothing. Only cells are present. That is cellular level of organization. So what food will food also enters through this be it the food or be it the water and not just that through the pores also they will have pores minute pores that is why they are called as porifera so you can see here they are full pores they have minute pores so through the pores also the exchange of uh, water the, the that is the removal of the water the excretory waste all that will take place it is called as ostea uh, we will study about that in, in the coming slide so all these will pass through one single kennel like this so that is why in sponges, the pathway of uh, water transport is also helpful in gathering food, in the exchange of respiratory gases that is for respiration and also it is helpful in the removal of the waste. And also when it comes to digestion, it is intracellular. So digestion is intracellular means it takes place between the cells. The, it takes place within the cells. That is why it is intracellular. Why it takes place within uh, intracellularly or within the cells is because there is no digestive system, right? So everything takes place inside the sponge as such. So it is intracellular. So next moving on to the structure of the sponge. So when you look at a sponge, what features can you consider to say that the sponge is uh, this is a sponge or this belongs to the kingdom porifera we shall see. 
So when you look at the body, they are asymmetrical. As I told you earlier. So what is asymmetry? So I can give you again the same example. I have my hand like this. When I draw a line in between, it should look similar. Will my palm look similar to each other? No. See, just I make a cut and just uh, observe within this line. This is different. This side is different, right? So my palm is asymmetrical but our body is symmetrical because exact half will have the same mirror image of it but in sponges it is asymmetrical so what can i say uh, give you an example so the best example is here if i draw a line in between can you see this side is completely different this side is completely different there is no it is not identical to each other that is why it is asymmetrical and when you look at a sponge it is so when you look at a sponge it is actually having Ostia. So, what is ostia? Can you see here? These are the ostia that are present. They are minute pores. So, ostia. So, ostia are nothing but the minute openings or the tiny pores that are present. So, minute pores and it is through the minute pores the uh, water enters and moves out and also through the osculum also that is the opening the water can enter and move out. So, they have ostia. So, what are the ostia? They are the minute pores that are present through which the water enters. And next in, when you look at the sponge body or the uh, animal belonging to the kingdom phylum porifera, you can find the seal. So, remember in the previous session, I had talked about seal. What is seal? Coelom. So, what is coelom? Coelom means cavity. So, they have a body cavity. So, since the coelom or the body cavity is present in the sponge, I am talking about the sponge, it is called as spongoseal. Means sponges having body cavity. Sponges having coelom. So, spongoseal. So, they have a cavity into which the water enters. So, through the pores the water will enter and it will move into the body cavity. So, that is the hollow. It is hollow inside. So, that is the body cavity through which it uh, moves. That is nothing but the canal system of movement as I told you. And next also they have something called as osculum through which the water goes out. So, osculum it is not visible here but osculum actually are pre it is a structure that is present wherever the ostia are present or the pores are present. So, through that so uh, the, uh, remember the water enters through the ostia and it moves out through the osculum. So, where are the ostia and the osculum present? Both are present in the sponge body that is the pore. Where the pore is there, there only the osculum is also present. So, water goes out of the osculum and also they have a specialized cell called as coanocytes or collar cells. cells. So, these coanocytes or collar cells, they actually line the cavity. So, these cells actually they have a layer called as coanocytes or collar cells which line. So, inside the kennel that is there. So, inside the kennel there is a lining inside the kennel. So, those lining are made up of cells called as coanocytes or collar cells and also the skeleton there is a skeleton system in the sponges because all these are hard calcareous substances. Obviously, inside the water they are soft but soon uh, you take it out of the water and expose it to the external environment, they become hard. It means they have a skeleton which supports the body. So, what is the skeleton made up of? It is called as spicules. Spicules are nothing but uh, sharp needle like, like thorn like. They are spicules. So, you can see here, they are. it almost looks thorn like it is very hard. So, they are made up of spicules and or they are also called as the spongin fiber. So, fibers usually they are hard substances, right? So, uh, they are also called as the spongin fibers. So, what? So, they have the sponges. When you look at the sponges, they are asymmetrical. So, they are asymmetrical and the, uh, they have uh, in this body, they have minute pores or openings called as ostia. Where the ostia is situated, there itself the osculum is also situated. So, ostia allows the entry of the water and osculum allows the exit of the water. And also apart from that, they have coanocytes or collar cell lines. So, these line the sponge seal and the kennels and also they have spicules or spongin fibers. So, these spicules and spongin fibers, they form the skeleton structure. So, they give the shape to the 
uh, sponge. So they form the skeleton structure of the sponge which actually supports the body of the sponges. So this is about the structure. Next moving on to reproduction. So sponges they are hermaphrodites means the sexes are not separate. That is the, it, there is no separation like the uh, male and the female both are present in one organism itself that is why they are hermaphrodite and also when we talk about the reproduction how they reproduce so they reproduce by asexual method so asexual method is by fragmentation again here fragmentation is one small bit of the sponge is cut it will develop into a new organism from that bit so that is nothing but asexual reproduction wherein it takes place by fragmentation and next sexual reproduction also occurs which takes place by gametes. So whenever I say sexual you should be able to understand they have the male and the female gamete. But I'll make it clear to you that though they have the male and the female gamete both the male and the female gamete produced in one sponge body itself. Why? Because the sexes are not separate. There is no separate male and female plant body. That is why they are herma. Phrodites, they are called as hermaphrodites and when it comes to fertilization, so sexual reproduction is by gametes and when it comes to fertilization, fertilization is internal that is it takes place within the sponge body itself and the development is indirect. Have, so indirect means it is like uh, we human beings, we have a direct develop. So uh, say for example, uh, there is no intermediate stage in some of the organisms, right? There is indirect development. So indirect development is there is some stage in between. So sponges, once the fertilization occurs and once uh, the uh, gametes fuse and the fertilization occurs and the next uh, progeny is being produced, before that there is one stage called as intermediate stage called as the larval stage. So you, have, you know about the butterflies and all that, right? They also have intermediate stages directly. Uh, they do not produce a butterfly. They'll have the larva, the pupa and all that, right? Just like that sponges also have a larval stage. And this larval stage, it is completely different when compared to the adults. It will look like something. You'll not at all think that this will give rise to an adult sponge. So first, uh, once the gamete fuse, they after a few days, they will for enter into a larval, larval stage that larva will later on develop into an adult. So this is the reproduction that takes place in sponges. So there are some examples of sponges. So beautiful to look at the sponges. So we have Sycon. So Sycon is one best example for sponge. So Sycon. Then comes the Spongilla. So Spongilla is the freshwater sponge. Spongilla. Then one more is the bath sponge. That is Euspongia. So sponge Sycon is also called as Siphon. Spongilla, it is, uh, it occurs in freshwater. That is why it is also called as freshwater sponge. And one more is bath sponge. That is you spongia. So this is you spongia. So these are the different types of examples of sponges that are present. So uh, this is about sponges. So next moving on to the next phylum that is coelenterata. So coelenterata are also called as nidarians. So coelenterata, they are actually aquatic. So we finished with one phylum that is sponges. Next moving on to the other phylum, coelenterata. So they are aquatic that is they can, they are marine. So they are found in marine habitat that is in oceans and in the seas. Next is they are sessile. Sessile means they cannot uh, move. So they are sessile or they can be free swimming. So always you have to remember one term. The sessile, the term sessile here has different meanings in biology. Okay, but it depends on the context where you are using it. So sessile in this case means it cannot move. It is non-motile. It is stagnant. It is uh, stick to one place that is sessile. Free swimming means they can move from one place to another. So here it's sessile means it is like that. But when we when I talk about flowering plants, sessile means they are infertile. So those uh, flowers which cannot produce the reproductive structures 
they are infertile so that also can be called as sessile but that is why i am telling you you have to use the word according to the context that you are or the chapter so uh, it is like that so here they may be sessile or free living and they have when it comes to the organization of the cells they have tissue level of organization so you can ask me ma'am sponges are also sessile that is they are fixed to a place and also they are marine they could have put coelenterates and sponges under phylum porifera itself right no they didn't did not do that why because with in the organization cellular organization see uh, uh, there is a difference there there was only cellular level of organization here a group of cells will form a tissue there is a tissue level of organization here that is the difference here and they are diploblastic so what is diploblastic so diploblastic means they have a coelom so in the coelom the coelom is covered by the covered by two layers right so or if we, uh, i can say that diploblastic means uh, they are covered by two layers that is the uh, endoderm and the ectoderm right in between there is one more layer called as the mesoglia that is not considered because it is uh, not it is not a differentiated layer it is just a mucilaginous covering so here since they have two layer that is an ectoderm and an endoderm it is called as diploblastic and when talking about the digestion the digestion can take place take place outside the body it can be extracellular or it can take place inside the body here also there is nothing like a organ system uh, level of development it is just up to the tissue level of development so here i have given you beautiful examples of nidaria so the jellyfish all these corals and uh, sea anemone so all these comes under the uh, nidarian species so these are nidarians so next moving on to the structure so here they are radially symmetrical means any half so i can show you here any angle you cut them they will equally cut look similar to each other that is radially symmetrical so i have explained in the previous session about that so they are radially symmetrical so any planes you cut them so say for example this is one organism i cut them in different planes like this they will look similar to each other any number of planes i cut they will look similar to each other that is nothing but radial symmetry so they are radially symmetrical again here phylum porifera was asymmetrical they didn't have any symmetry phylum uh, nidaria or coelenteratas they have radial radial symmetrical so and also the animal uh, body that is of the phylum uh, coelenterates they have they have stinging capsules or nematocytes so the best example i can give you is jellyfish so jellyfish is said to pass few electric currents which is harmful or the um, these tentacle like things of the jellyfish they are said to be poisonous right so that is why in seas and all when we get stung by a jellyfish or when it when we come in contact with the jellyfish we get that uh, severe pain so uh, because of they may be poisonous or they may have some electric currents in them so these uh, that is they have stinging capsule as the name itself suggests stinging to poke mosquito st mosquito sting bees sting just like that the stinging capsules which are also called as nematocysts so these are present on the tentacles so when you see the jellyfish here I have these are the tentacles that are present in the jellyfish so in these tentacles at the tip of the tentacle they have stinging capsules which are also called as nematocysts so these nematocysts are present on the tentacles and also in the body and hence the name nidoblast so since they have nematocyst or stinging capsule that is why these organisms are also called as nidoblast or they are also called as nidocytes so that that is how the name came yeah nidaria or coelenterates that is how the name also exists as nidaria what do they have they have in their body they have tentacles so in the tentacles there are stinging capsules present so these stinging capsules are not just present in the tentacles but it is also present in the body and they actually uh, give uh, they act as protection to the organism that is whenever a threat is there they can just sting the uh, uh, sting the uh, organism or an other animal uh, which is causing them 
threat that is whenever they are in danger they can use this nematocyst or the stinging capsules because these nematocyst and stinging capsules are present they are also called as nidoblast or nidocytes these organisms so nidoblast they are actually used for anchorage because i told you they can be sessile as well as they can be free living so they anchorage means to cling on to something to hold on to something maybe their prey because they also need food right maybe to hold on to the food so that they can engulf the food so snedoblast they are usually used for anchorage and also for defense purpose that is whenever there is a threat in order to protect themselves also these can be used for defense purposes and also for capturing the prey that is for capturing the food so for capturing the food they need to hold the food right that is they need to cling on to the food so or anchor to the food so for all these these nidoblasts are actually helpful that is the tentacles are actually helpful so this is about the structure of the nidarians so next moving on to again when we look at the structure they have a central gastrovascular cavity so they have a gastrovascular cavity so as the name itself suggests gastrovascular cavity is something to do with the digestion process and all that and i also told you their digestion can be internal as well as it can take place in inside the body that is internal or outside the body that is external so they have a central gastrovascular cavity which is a cavity means it is a opening or a hollow space so with a single opening called the hypostome so in the cavity there is a single opening called the hypostome and hypostome where is it present it is present at the oral tip of the mouth food purpose and all that this can be used so hypostome it is present at the oral tip on which the mouth is present so at the or, uh, mouth that is uh, or uh, on the hypostome the mouth is present so where is the hypostome present it is present at the oral tip so oral is something to do with the mouth part right so it is a, it is a mouth part that is a hypostome so when we look at the skeleton so when it comes to the skeleton they are composed of calcium carbonate the best example is corals corals again if you have visited the seaside and all you might have uh, found people uh, uh, like uh, selling a few hard substances which looks like trees right actually they are soft underwater to some extent they are soft underwater when they when they are taken out of the water they are actually very very hard so why because they contain calcium carbonate so the skeleton is made up of calcium carbonate the best example that i can give you is of coral so corals also come under the nidoblast or the nidarians so and uh, they have two basic body forms that is the body forms of the organism they can exist in two forms one is called as polyp and one is called as medusa so what is this polyp and medusa we shall see so polyp means polyp those means they are cylindrical they are cylindrical to look like the best example i can give you is hydra so i have taken the example of hydra here so it is cylindrical what is cylindrical just like this with two hollow at the end one end is also hollow here full hollow pipe like the best example i can give you is a pipe pipe is cylindrical so just like that it the hydra is also cylindrical so those organisms under the phylum c phylum cylindrata those organisms which are sessile that is they cannot move they are stuck to one particular place those organisms that are sessile and cylindrical they are called as polyps so those structures are called as polyps so the best example is hydra adamsia etc so i have taken the example here hydra and next is one more structure it they exist in two structural forms one was polyp which is sessile and it is cylindrical the other one is medusa so medusa they are free living the best example is this jellyfish all that they are aurelia so here i have taken the example of aurelia so jellyfish aurelia can you see they are umbrella like right the body's shape is umbrella like it is like this just like umbrella so that is why they are called as medusa medusa means umbrella shaped so they are umbrella shaped and they are free swimming the example i have taken here is aurelia and or jellyfish so i have taken the example of aurelia here
So this is about this body structure. So the coelenterates can exist in two, two body forms that is polyp and medusa. So what are they? We have seen. So next moving on to the reproduction. So these nidarians or the coelenterates, they uh, occur in two forms as I told you that is in polyp form and medusa form. So that is why they exhibit alteration of generation. So here which is called as metagenesis. So alteration of generation. Remember we had studied in plant kingdom about alteration of generation. The same way here alteration of generation takes place. That is from polyp form to medusa form. From medusa form to polyp form like that alternation of generation is seen. So I told you they can exist in two forms. That is structural forms. Polyp form and medusa form. So polyps are cylindrical medusae they are umbrella shaped right so here when i talk about alteration of generation so they can ask you what is metagenesis so metagenesis is nothing but the alteration of generation from the polyp and the med between the polyp and the medusa form in coelenterates or in nidarians they are nothing but metagenesis so these polyps they produce medusae they get converted into medusae form asexually and the medusae form, they form the polyps sexually. So remember in plant kingdom, I told you about sporophytic form and gametophytic form, right? Sporophytic form, it is asexual. Gametophytic form, sexual. So just like that, here also, the polyps, they produce medusae asexually and the medusae, they form the polyps sexually. So there is alternation of generation occurring here. The best example I can give you is one of the nidarian, which is called as obelia. So obelia usually exhibit this metagenesis, which is nothing but alternation of generation where the polyp, it produces the medusae asexually and the medusae produces the polyp sexually. So alternation of generation is taking place. So this is how the reproduction occurs in the case of the nidarians or the phylum coelenterata. So next moving on to some of the beautiful examples that I can give you of phylum coelenterata. So one is called as the Portuguese man of war. So one of the coelenterates, the best example is Portuguese man of war. It is Physalia. Then we have Adamsia that is sea anemone. So sea anemone all of you might have seen if you have if you are a cartoon lover you might have watched the movie Nemo right. So there you can see the uh, fish that travels between the sea anemones and all that it is a very beautiful movie wherein you will get to see the different um, what is that uh, fishes uh, the classes of fishes then the different corals and uh, the sea anemone all that beautifully it is depicted you can just watch when you are free once. Okay. So Adamsia that is nothing but sea anemone. So sea anemone this is the best example. So even nowadays in aquariums also we find the sea anemone and whenever they leave a clownfish inside the aquarium right. So clownfish actually it lives within the sea anemone. So uh, this is a beautiful sea anemone that you can see here. Different species of sea anemones are there. This is one which I have put. Next one beautiful example is Penatula. It is called a sea pen. So Penatula is also called a sea pen. Then we have uh, Gorgonia. Gorgonia is sea fan. Can you see here? This is Gorgonia that I have put here. Gorgonia. It is sea fan. And next we have Meandrin. So here one more I told you. Uh, penatula that is C pen it just uh, have you seen olden days how they used to use the pen they would have a big huge feather and at the tip nib they used to dip it in the nib and write same way it looks like just like a pen with feathers so that is why this is C pen so C anemone C pen then we have uh, Gor gorgonia which looks like a fan then we have um, uh, what else as I told you, meandrina, that is brain coral. So this is brain coral, meandrina. So here you can see it looks just like brain. So that is why it is called as brain coral. So these are the different examples of cylindrate. So there is a vast amount of examples that are there. Few of them I have just mentioned here. So this is a very beautiful phylum wherein you get to see a lot of aquatic forms of cylindrates and uh, nidarians. So I hope you have understood this session wherein I have discussed about two phylums in today's class that is uh, phylum uh, coelenterata and uh, also the phylum 
porifera. So phylum porifera, they are nothing but the sponges and coelenterates. Why it is called coelenterates or nidarians? Because in the tentacles, they have the nematocyst. So these nematocysts are nothing but they are uh, structures which uh, help in uh, providing protection to that particular organism. Because they are present, they are called as nidarians. So also we studied the characteristics of these organisms and based on those characteristics only, they have been grouped as phylum porifera and phylum coelenterate or nidaria separately. So in the next coming sessions, we shall discuss about the other phylums that are there uh, in the uh, animal kingdom. So I hope you understood this session very well. We shall meet in the coming session. Thank you.